Hi there. I'm doing a practical workshop on dew point profile. So this is a slide one. So I'm going to do it in three separate pieces. OK, um, so first up, we need to gather all the data. So it's quite complex. So bear with me. Um, OK, first up, we need to look at properties of elements in our wall. OK, so we need three main things. We're looking at temperature and we're looking at dew point. So we need to know vapor pressure um within the air okay because we need to know um when the dew point is going to happen so that involves relative humidity and the vapor pressure you can get this information from met office data um or you can measure the information so you can actually take value readings inside and outside your your wherever your building is okay so um I've got outside is 8 degrees, 90% relative humidity, 1.4 kPa, which is 1,400 pA pascals, okay? So inside, I've got 23 degrees, 50% relative humidity, and 1.75, okay? So uh, what else do I need to know? Well, I need to know the thickness of the materials. I've got my profile there, which is fine. Um, so this is nice visual. And then I've just written it there, plaster work in metres, block work, cavity, brickwork in metres, not in millimetres or centimetres, because as you can see, conductivity is what's per metre Kelvin and vapour resistivity is uh, per metre squared. So you need to bear in mind, you need to get the values the same. OK, um, so I've got a little table there just showing you for each material how conductive it is. Um, in terms of heat and then how resistive it is in terms of vapor. We need to convert them into resistances because we need to know how resistive it is to temperature and how resistive it is to vapor so that we can plot that information. So here is a lovely table. I've gone through each element, SI surface inside, P, plaster, BL block work, as you can see, they correspond with all the uh, letters there. OK, so thermal resistance is first up. I only have conductivity. How do I find out the resistance? Well, what's for me to Kelvin for me to work out the resistance? I need the depth because I need to know um, the per area. OK, um, how resistive it is traveling through an area. Right. So what I do is I get the depth of the material and then I divide the conductivity by that. So I inverse it and turn it from a conductivity into a resistivity value. Um, so there you go. 0 0.02 divided by 0 0.18 and that gives me 0 0.2. That's my thermal resistance for plaster. I do that for every single element and then I get my total resistance Okay, for the whole wall. Right. So temperature drop. How am I going to now determine how quickly the temperature drops or how, you know, what the temperature drop is between 23 and 8? It's not a straight line because each material resists the temperature um, thermally at a different rate. So what I do is I turn those resistances. So each layer is a ratio of the total for my um, for my whole wall. Yeah. Um, so I just turn it into a ratio. So the layer resistance 0.2 divided by the total resistance for the whole wall. And then I times that by the difference in temperature, because that's basic, effectively the temperature range that I'm going to be, that ratio is applying itself to. So what it's telling me is the temperature will drop by 0.929 by the time I've passed through that plaster work. Yeah. And then it's the same. I do the same for blocks. It's going to drop by 4.22. Okay keep going keep going and then you should find that the sum of all the temperatures should add up to 15 degrees because that is the difference between 23 out inside and 8 outside so you should find that 15 degree delta t yeah difference in temperature all of these values should add up to there and that's how you know you've done it right <laughs> and then you do the same for the boundary you've got 23 outside so what we want to say is well we know how much it drops per um, degree right we know how much it, it drops per material uh, but we're going to put a value to it now so on the inside it's 23 degrees well by the time it's gone through plaster and it's dropped by 0 0.929 what is it well actually it's 22.071 degrees so that's all I'm doing I'm just taking away these temperature drops from the temperature that we've got here originally and then we should end up from 23 to 8 and we should have at each boundary so each line 
between each material, there is a temperature there. So that's lovely. Um, so once we've done that, we literally apply it to vapour. We do exactly the same process with vapour. All we do with vapour, because we've already got the resistance, it's not the conductivity of vapour, it's the resistance, we've already got that. All we're doing is timesing that by the depth for us to get the resistance, okay? So 60, which I had as my vapour resistance, right? Um, and I'm timesing that by 0 0.02. Just bear in mind, I've got mega Newton meter squared, right? And mega Newton there. So make sure your um, your values are the same. If it was in Newtons, you'd need to convert that to Newtons, etc., etc. Okay. So just make sure you're aware of that. Okay. So 60 times 0 0.02 gives me 1.2 uh, for plaster block work brick. Um, sorry, cavity brickwork so because I've got the resistivity I can just work that out quite easily and then I've got my total resistance throughout the whole material I do exactly the same as I did from temperature up here sorry um, across here pressure drop I'm divided so I basically get my resistance of my uh, plaster I divide it by the total resistance for the whole material the whole wall and then I times it by the difference in pressure between the outside and the inside and that gives me my ratio it's basically telling me right oh um, how much of this uh, pressure is is going to be sort of resisted by this specific material and that's my figure there 36.207 right and again what you should find is if you add up all of these resistances or these pressure drops sorry the pressure drops um if you add them all together um, they should add up to 350 because the pressure drop between inside and outside is actually 350 PA. Yeah. Okay. Which is so 1.75 kPa is 1,750. 1.4 kPa is 1,400. Yeah. To make sure they add up to 350. Lovely. And then you do exactly the same as you did for temperature down here again. You've got your inside vapor pressure 1750 okay so what am I going to do I'm going to take away the pressure drop of my plaster right and then I've got 1713 and I do the same I've got my 1713 so that's now I've gone through my plaster pressure is here right that's my vapor pressure right now and then I have to go through my block work well actually I've by the time I've been through block work I've dropped again by 150.862 so I take that away and what I've got 1562 so I just make my way through and you should end up, again, the outside and inside values should match your building information. If it does, brilliant. That's jobs are good. All right. So we'll move on to the next slide. So thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, good luck with that.